Welcome to Euronet Plus. In today's debate, we are welcoming member of the European Parliament, Per Vange Berez, who is a member of the group of the Socialists and Democrats. Welcome and thank you for accepting to answer our questions. Thank you for inviting me. Um, as usual, we will first take questions from members of our Euronet Plus um, network of radios. And the first question will be from Budapest. We will have a question from Balaj Narai. He is from MTVA Radio in Hungary. My question would concern the roots of social unrest in Europe, in France. Where do you see the causes of social crisis in some parts of the society? Is it purely a socio-economic issue or political debate ahead of the EP elections? I'm asking this because we hear from economists, analysts, that in the EU we are witnessing a constant economic growth. The 2008-2009 crisis is far away. That seems to be in contradiction with the talk about social crisis. Thank you for this very, very good question. And uh, uh, not playing with, with words, I would say uh, the answer to your question, it's uh, this crisis, the yellow jacket, as we now call them, uh, is, uh, in my understanding, uh, uh, related to the two issue you mentioned. Somehow, of course, the, the policy of this government has triggered the fact that they have uh, uh, cancelled, as you remember, maybe uh, in the beginning of this mandate or their mandate, uh, the, the wealth tax on the one hand. And now they were uh, uh, moving to an increase of the uh, fuel tax. Uh, so these, I would say, low middle class uh, population or citizen uh believe they were really uh, first hit by by such a measure and uh, suddenly they realize that uh, they were some kind of in a loophole in the whole strategy of uh, member state and uh, of governments so this is of course related to the current uh, policy or the current uh, government policies but uh, you cannot i, I believe uh, uh, summarize it only by this reference i think it's a, a much deeper uh, feeling of uh, unease, and this is where it also becomes politics. Somehow it is the, 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 the French answer to, to move and worries that you can see uh, in other country. Not to, to, to put everything in the same basket, but somehow you could say that the Brexit, the way people voted in the Brexit, is following the same mood. Now, is it uh, a movement uh, do the yellow jacket uh, go into the street because of the foreseen human uh, election? Uh, to this aspect, the, 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 the answer is no. Will the government use the national debate that they have now opened uh, to, to trigger some theme and some element for their campaign? Of course, then uh, this aspect you can say yes, but uh, I think this is the full answer I would like to, to give you. So your point of view is that Brexit, but maybe also the, like, the government now in Italy, the unrest yeah. in Hungary, yeah. the, the Gilets jaunes, they are all connected. Yeah, I mean, of course, each nation has its own history, its own way of uh, reacting to events and uh, uh, its own uh, policies. Uh, and, and so, I mean, in Italy, they had, uh, they had Berlusconi at some stage and they had other uh, challenges to face. And in, in UK, they were very much stuck with a conservative uh, uh, internal fight that did trigger the, the way uh, they could face the, 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 challenge, the, the, the upcoming challenges. But in between all these um, question about how does democracy deliver uh, and how the, the setting that uh, was uh, uh, given for granted and was uh, proposed as one where someone could uh, somehow raise their children with the idea that they will be better off uh, tomorrow thanks to uh, uh, the, the system. Uh, this is now uh, under question. And uh, this is something where you can, I can see common roots between different uh, movements. So we say this is a generation that is probably going to be poorer than their parents. And oh, uh, so you see, yeah. they, this is something that obviously is not specific to one country. Yeah. Yes. And um, this is also what brought, as you said, the new government, uh, Italian government to power. And mm. uh, we'll go to a question from our um, Radio 24, uh, our Italian member from mm. Milano. Here's Gigi Donelli. 
Good morning from Milano. My question to our guest is the following. After the 10th Samedi des Gilets Jaunes in France, we are all following the developments of this important protest movement, who already caught to the interested attention by the Italian government partner Movimento Cinque Stelle. Do you foresee more involvement by other European political groups? Thank you very much. Well, this is a paradox of uh, European political life. Huh? I would say somehow, and I uh, just uh, mentioned the fact, the fact that uh, there are events that in one country does reflect what is happening in the other country. How much on this basis can we define uh, a European public space? I think Euronet is a good uh, uh, radio to discuss it. And you can see some, some passerelle, of course. But, you know... Um, you have to be very careful because even though we have developed a, a European public space, um, when it comes to specific issue, you can see that uh, member states uh, and even public opinion somehow are reluctant for others to intervene in what they consider their national debate. So you really have to do the divide between what belongs to one country and what, what belongs to, to its institutional and national setting where they have to find the solution. For example, on Brexit, it's obvious that on Brexit, now it's, uh, they have, the UK has raised a question to the EU. Uh, uh, the EU now has said what they wanted, what was the, the answer the EU could give to that question. But now it's to the EU to decide what they, to the UK to decide what they want to do following this. In the case of uh, uh, Italy, uh, some members of the government in Italy putting a bridge between what's happening in Italy and uh, uh, the, the yellow jacket. Uh, I think, of course, here you can see the, the interest of uh, the, the Italian government to do such a thing. Uh, but you need to be cautious because uh, I think you cannot, uh, you see, th there might be some common roots, but I think you cannot uh, 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 believe that you would have a copy pass between uh, uh, the current Italian government and the French government. For me, I mean, this is the limit of uh, uh, how to compare to, to, to situation. So do you think there is a risk of political, I mean, politicization of this debate in, in France now during the EU elections or what impact could well, they it's, have it's on the EU election? Going on, uh, yes. It's already going on. In what but way? It's, it's already going on, even though um, there are still some doubts in, in some uh, 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 news uh, uh, journalist comments and uh, in, in the political uh, discussion on uh, where does this uh, movement falls. Huh? Uh, even though I think you have to admit and everybody should recognize that uh, the violence is uh, very much in this hand of uh, people quite well organized on top of the yellow, road, the, the yellow jacket that was quite a spontaneous uh, move uh, to start with. But now that the violence and, and the, 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 the whole netting around this movement uh, is very much from the extreme right. Uh, and you, you should uh, be careful uh, 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 of this uh, balance. Huh? So it's it's a tricky point. So but the question we were asking when we were we were discussing with our, our uh, radio members, um, is it also about social Europe lagging behind and this traditional paradigm with the economic integration going ahead? Well, and economic, yeah, but yeah. this is the whole on ease we are discussing since the beginning of this uh, uh, very interesting uh, conversation uh, goes in line with this idea that uh, well, an idea I've been fighting for for uh, the start of my mandate here 25 years ago, huh? that um, we've been doing the internal market and we were, I mean, the majority of the decision maker in Brussels were believer that uh, internal market, free trade uh, would allow redistribution and uh, uh, equal chance or uh, a fair share of uh, wealth. Um, but the reality has uh, demonstrated the uh, other way. And the claim we were asking for for a very long time about social Europe, about public services and blah, 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 didn't happen uh, to, to the size and the magnitude it should have 
to compensate globalization. And in the end, you know, um, globalization is a good thing, but it does have some impact and some consequences for human uh, citizens uh, that were not taken into account. And uh, so I don't say that this is an excuse for extreme right government in, in such or such a member state or for uh, violence uh, among a yellow, yellow jacket. But uh, the route for the unease of our population facing uh, uh, the end of the 13 uh, 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 years of uh, Europe being the front runner uh, at the global world level uh, it has something to do with the situation, yeah. Yes, and there's little the EU, the EU can do actually. And actually, um, what we heard uh, from uh, Joel uh, Darvas, he's from the Bergel think tank, he says the EU is actually doing quite a good job in encouraging member states, but more could be done. Let's listen to him. What the European Commission can do is to encourage countries to harmonize, for example, their vast taxes and increase their vast taxes. I think vast taxes and inherent taxes are the most justified from a social perspective and also the least distortive. And the European institutions should also play a role in making uh, <coughs> this issue uh, very prominent in debates and, and encouraging member states to act uh, collectively. Uh, simultaneously uh, by increasing these various wealth and inheritance taxes. Thank you, Davos, for, for this uh, <laughs> question. Nice to, to, to answer your, your question and uh, long time no see. But um, you're right, except, except, uh, except as you know, uh, uh, these kind of taxes, they are completely in the hand of a member state and uh, there is no EU competence. So the only thing we could do is to use uh, what we call the Hupin Semester, which is a framework for coordination among economic policy uh, 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 from a member state to give an incentive for member states to do such a reform. Um, this would be a good point because this is where, um, uh, uh, especially when you have real estate uh, uh, um, taxation, uh, this is a taxation that cannot be uh, outsourced. Huh? And uh, of course, one of the, the challenge about uh, thinking of a fair and modern taxation system is that you have to realize that tax that uh, wealth is a very mobile uh, uh, factor. So you have to be uh, uh, clever in setting the, the right framework. But even though I think it's uh, difficult uh, we, we know that uh, member states are very much afraid of move, you know, for example, in France, some wealthy people, they, they, they change uh, their residence to uh, Belgium or to uh, UK or to other places just because of this. So That's why we need harmonization, actually. Yeah, this yeah. is why you need to do it uh, all, all, all together. And, uh, but this is not in the full competence of uh, the EU, so it needs to be... Uh, on the basis of good uh, will by member state, but I think it's a, of course, as a, an impulsion that the Commission could give, it's it's a good idea. The other thing is that uh, also uh, the Commission could do is when they look at uh, the investment by member state, they should make sure that member state do uh, go on investing in uh, policy that are critical for equality. For example, in uh, uh, infrastructure, but also in education, in uh, in uh, health, and uh, when they have a, a look at the budget from member state, they should avoid that uh, uh, because of the Maastricht criteria, uh, public spending in these specific fields uh, would be cut. So this. In the end, and this is my uh, uh, last point of my answer to, to Davos' uh, uh, question is, uh, or proposal, is that in the end you also have to look how the growth and stability pact is uh, uh, settled and how it does or not allow the proper investment in uh, uh, policies that do, do make people more equal at national level. Thank you very much. I think we'll wrap up here. And thanks a uh, million for your presence and very interesting answers. Well, uh, thank you for question. the very, very good question. <laughs> thank you. And thank you for watching Euronet Plus.